everybody, welcome back. I'm Jessica Brody and this is Shining the Light. I don't know about you, but I hear a lot about the term God's timing. And most of the time, I think I'm pretty content to walk in God's timing. But there are some days or some seasons in my life when I have a passion that is so strong. It's something that I want so badly and I think it's of God. I'm certain it's of God. I pray and I pray and it doesn't happen and I get really frustrated. Then all the seeds of doubt start to creep in. You know, I start to wonder, well, is am I hearing God right? Is this of God? Did I really hear God correctly? Maybe I thought God was saying this, but I was really supposed to be this. Maybe I did it wrong. Maybe I'm not good enough. All those thoughts start to circle. It becomes really, really hard. It starts to unnerve the very core of me and it, it threatens to steal the joy. And that's when I know a lot of times that the evil one is, is messing with my head and trying to dig in with all those doubts and lies. And I have to take a step back and recenter myself and talk to God again and and really reset. I was recently organizing my life because my kids went back to school recently and for whatever reason, nesting took over. Are you familiar with that? It's like getting your whole house just in preparation for a child or a new thing. And so anyway, we were getting ready for back to school and for whatever reason, that meant that we needed to completely go through all of our old papers and reorganize bedrooms and clean out the tops of closets because of course that has everything to do with going back to school. Not at all. So I found, I found this. This is actually my very first manuscript. I wrote it when I was about 21. It's called Milltown. And I worked so hard on that book. I just, it was my whole life. I, I put blood, sweat, and tears. It was just the first real full length book I had ever created. Mind you, I think I've been a writer all my life. I. I I know I've mentioned before that the first toy that I remember playing with as a kid was my mom's old typewriter. I've been reading since I was really little. I always had my nose in a book. It, in fact, it was the perfect escape for a really shy kid like me was to always be walking around. I always had a book. I always had a friend, something to just shield me from the world. And I'm pretty certain that if I weren't a writer, I would probably be a librarian or a professional student or something like that. You know, it's. Books are, are really just my favorite things. And, and it's not just books, I love movies too, anything with a story. And you know, I, I majored in journalism in college. I have my master's in literature. So I've been making my living as a professional writer since I graduated from college. So we're, we're talking decades now, but there are times when seeds of doubt still creep in. For example, I'll get vulnerable with you and share that my passion, my lifelong dream has been to publish my fiction. And yet I've, my, I've been published in nonfiction. I've, I've been working as a journalist since I was in my 20s. I've been freelancing and editing and, and helping other people's books get prepared for publication. You know, I've done book layout and everything else, but I've not yet seen my own fiction published. I've never seen my fiction on a shelf along with all the other books that I love. And there have been times in my life when that's been a really frustrating thing for me. And it does sometimes make you wonder, is it because this plan is not in alignment with God's plan? Or is it because God has perfect timing? And sometimes that's the case, you know, sometimes it's the case that, that a plan or a dream that you have is not God's also. And that requires a recheck. But other times when you know, when you feel God has spoken into you and given you an idea and told you repeatedly, this will come, this will happen, this is what I need you to do and shows you that vision and you've been obedient and following it and yet it still hasn't happened. It makes you wonder what is going on. And in those times, 
it's good to stop and reset and pause and remember that God has perfect timing, that there is a reason that things are not where they are right now. We don't always know all those reasons, but God knows those reasons. For example, I was 30 something and I was living in a place, I was miserable because I wasn't anywhere near my family and I had young children and I was convinced that if only I could get hired in education and move across the state to where my mom lived, that that would be the answer to everything. And so I applied and I applied and I certainly had credentials and yet I never even got an interview. I don't know why. And, and looking back, I had the qualifications, my cover letter was good, everything was right, and yet I never got called. And it was as though God was very firmly shutting that door and saying to me, Jessica, this is not your path. This is not the road I want you to take. Don't go down that road. Now, looking back, I am so grateful that I never went down that path because he opened another door that was so much better. It's a door that led me to where I am now. But at the time, I didn't understand it. I just needed to trust in his perfect timing. And I didn't have to wait long. I didn't have to wait long and everything worked out. Other times in your life, you might have a situation with a, a relationship that you were so hopeful for and God shut that door and you don't understand. And then you look back and you realize he has a plan and his timing is best. A lot of times it requires surrendering to his plan, letting go of our fear and knowing that he has everything in control. We have nothing to fear as long as we are rooted in him, reading his word, dialoguing with him, and we feel like we are following him, then it's then the pressure's off. We just need to sit back and wait. I'll tell you, after a lot of prayer lately, I'm not discouraged in the least right now because I can clearly hear God speaking into my life. Just wait, it's coming. I hear it and I feel it and I know it. And that knowledge is bigger than any fear. Now, if you're in a place today of just waiting desperately for a dream that you desire so much, I'm going to encourage you to do three things. First, relax. Relax the desperation and just relax and bask in the peace of knowing that God is in control. Second, trust. Trust that his timing is best. We don't always know the full situation, but he does. He can see what's down the road. He can see why it's better to wait today so that tomorrow things are better. Third, I wanna offer a few Bible verses to tuck inside your heart that are really powerful. First one is 1 Philippians 6, which says, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. The second one is also in Philippians, but in chapter two, verse 13, for it is God who works in you to will and to act according to his good purpose. Next one is from Romans 8:28, And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. And the last one I wanna share is actually from the book of Job, which can be a really depressing book, but it also has so much, so many nuggets of wisdom and surrender. If you haven't read the book of Job, I encourage you. It's from Job 42.2, it's at the very end. Job replied to the Lord in verse two, I know that you can do all things. No plan of yours can be thwarted. So that's the point. If it is God's plan, nothing can thwart it. Nothing can get in the way of what he has planned. There is no power strong enough to stand against the Lord's. So check yourself. If the passion of your heart is in alignment with what God wants for your life, and if its ultimate purpose is to glorify him, rest easy. 
he'll make it happen. That's all for this week, friends. If you aren't already checking out my blog, I'd love to invite you over there. Every week I blog on, on these topics, but just a little different version. Also on Thursdays, I've started featuring interviews with Christian authors, um, mostly fiction, some nonfiction, just to really help us get to know what other books are out there, what other people are doing for Christ. And, you know, there's everything from sci-fi, also called speculative fiction, to romance, to contemporary to historical novels. I mean, everything you can possibly imagine. And it's really good stuff. So, so check it out. And that's on my blog on Thursdays. My devotionals are usually on Mondays. You can find all of this at jessicabrody.com. Anyway, until next week, have a great day. God bless you and keep on shining the light.
In fact, this isn't even the first book I've written. I've actually written four full-length novels, and I'm working on my fifth right now. And every one of them, and every one of them I love, especially the last three, because those God specifically put on my heart.